Hi, hello, hello everyone, and welcome to another video about BCE economics. Today we're going to be talking about aggregate supply curves, um, throwing this one together, partly to help my own students when we go into revision, and partly just to help anyone else about basically how aggregate supply run aggregate supply curves are constructed in BCE economics, like how we look at them, what different components of them mean, and how favorable and unfavorable shifts occur when you look at them. So if you want to tie this in with a specific area of study, it's either going to be with Unit 2, Area Study 1 for economic growth, or it's going to be with uh, Unit 3, Area Study 2, when you're looking at aggregate demand, aggregate supply in um, macroeconomic activity. So let's get straight into it about how the curve is constructed. So when we've got an aggregate supply curve, it looks a little bit like this. So when we look at aggregate supply in VC economics, we're looking at short-run aggregate supply. There's a whole lot of stuff about like, Keynesian economics and like all that kind of stuff. You don't need to know that level of depth in VC economics. Like on the VC exam, they ask about aggregate supply. They don't ask about long term, long run aggregate supply, short run aggregate supply. They ask about aggregate supply and they're talking about short run aggregate supply, which looks like this curve here. And there are three main components of it that you need to be aware of. So with this curve here, there are three main components. There is this first section here, which is where it's relatively flat and horizontal. That represents basically um, a level of production that's going to occur no matter what. And so at a general, at a certain price level, no matter what, there is going to be a certain level of goods and services that are produced because there are needs being satisfied. Like no matter what, no matter how bad the economy gets, there's always a certain amount we are going to demand businesses to produce because that will satisfy our basic needs. And then as the economy starts performing better and better and better, we start moving further along the curve until we hit the equilibrium point, which is where all markets clear, like when the level of aggregate demand meets the level of aggregate supply, which is what should happen. We um, produce the amount that meets our needs and wants, and there is no oversupply and no shortages that occur, and therefore we maximize living standards. But then when we start to get along this vertical here, which I'll highlight as we talk about it, so when we get along this vertical here, this is when we're hitting our productive capacity. So this is um, when a country is at their productive capacity in the short term. Um, usually this happens when there's excessive amounts of aggregate demand. I mean, there's so much being demanded that we can't actually produce that much in the short term. And what tends to happen there, and if we drew in a situation when that happens, so if aggregate demand increased and we had a big ugly extra curve here, um, you can see what happens is that at a certain point, no matter how much price increases, which is what we have along this axis here, the general price levels, no matter how much price increases, we can't actually supply anymore because in the short run, we are producing everything that we can with the resources available. So in the short run, we can't actually do anything. We can only increase our price because that's the only option we have to try and limit demand, increase the prices so less people want those goods and services and businesses can maximize their profits. In the longer term, we can actually do things that will be able to expand that curve outwards and we can produce more. But in the immediate short term, we are limited by our resources that we have available and the efficiency in which we use those resources. So in the short run, the reason why we get that vertical part of the aggregate supply curve is that we hit our productive capacity. So that vertical section represents the productive capacity, and that horizontal section is basically the minimum amount of goods and services we need to produce to satisfy society's needs. So then if we keep looking into it here, we get shifts to the aggregate supply curve. And so first we're going to look at unfavorable shifts of aggregate supply, and these occur from anything where a business either has increased cost of production or a decrease in their productivity or efficiency. So some examples of things that could cause this are things like increases to business tax. So if business tax increases or company tax, whatever you want to call it, what's going to happen is businesses, if they're paying more tax, they want to protect their profitability. So what they're going to do is increase their prices to make sure that they're still receiving the same levels of profits which is going to make it worse for consumers. And so when you see when the supply, aggregate supply curve moves to the left like that, you can see that less is being supplied, but at a higher price. And that's because they're passing on that higher cost of production to you. 
there are other things that can cause this, like if we have skill shortages in certain industries, it drives prices up because businesses suddenly start having to pay more for wages because those employees are in demand or those workers are in demand and therefore that drives up prices because they pass that on to you. Anything where it shifts to the left, that is cost inflation, which means that businesses are passing that cost on to you. Also increase in the cost of resources. So we could have that as a big example right now with the Australian dollar falling significantly, it means that imports that we use as factors of production are more expensive. And therefore that leads to businesses that use imports as inputs in production to increase their prices to make up for that. So these are all unfavorable shifts. When the supply curve moves to the left, prices increase because those businesses pass on their increased costs to you to protect their profitability. Lastly, what we're gonna look at is favorable shifts in aggregate supply. This is when the curve moves to the right, which doesn't work when I'm doing it on the screen because that just moves to the opposite side because I forget that we're doing other things. So moves to the right. So this can occur from anything where a business has a decreased cost of production or an increase in their productivity or efficiency. So a decrease in business tax could do this. So they're decreasing the small business tax to 27.5%. When businesses are paying less tax, it means that they have a lower cost of production. They can afford to produce more at a cheaper rate. They're more likely to invest and expand. They've got smaller cost of production, therefore they might be able to sell their products at a lower price. They can also have a favorable shift from education and training. So when you, education and training is like the perfect example for aggregate supply. When you educate and train your workers, you're hoping they're gonna be more efficient and produce more per hour worked. And therefore, if they're producing more per hour, it means you're getting basically more productivity, more production overall. Therefore, we can afford to produce more at a lower price. And therefore, they can sell at a lower price and better be able to supply society. Research and development is another one. So research and development, um, well, there's a lot of incentive for businesses to do that that we'll get into in unit four. But research and development essentially, if successful, will lead to businesses being more productive. If their research and development is successful, they're gonna find new ways to produce that are going to lead to them being able to produce more with the resources that they have. Apologies for pausing there. The bell music started playing because I'm now recording back at school and there's no students today. And for some reason, bell music decided to play at one o'clock, which isn't even when we normally go to recess at lunchtime. So back to this. So we're talking about research and development. If successful, leads to more production at a lower price, which is great for a business. They're able to produce more. Great for aggregate supply, therefore favorable. Shifts to the right. Subsidies is another way. So subsidies is where the government basically incentivizes businesses to produce a certain good or service by giving them some kind of payment to do that. If they do that, it reduces the business's cost of production and therefore allows them to produce more at a lower price, therefore favorable for aggregate supply. All right, so that's essentially it for aggregate supply. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions at all, feel free to shoot me a message, send me an email, start a chat, all those things that I always say. Um, other than that, like any videos that you want, just let me know. I'm more than happy to um, try and get it going, even though school's going back to normal as of tomorrow. I'm more than happy to record videos if they help people out. I'll try and find time to do it, whether it be at school or at home, um, which makes my life sound really sad, but I actually really enjoy doing this. I find it it's an effective method of teaching because you can pause at any time, ask me questions, and I can help you out. On that, I hope you have an excellent day, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.